Hi, my name is Vesna Karapetrova and we're here today at Canadian Macedonian Place on Tuesday, July 29th, 2014 to interview Mr. Gigo Czechkirovsky. Welcome Dr. Gigo Czechkirovsky and thank you for sharing your life story with us here for the archives of the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society. Let's begin with where and when were you born? Oh, I was born in Macedonia, Greek Macedonia, and uh, in, my, in my village, my village name is Statica. Mm -hmm. And I was born, well, would you like to know the date and everything? Right? Yes, the date, uh, the year. I was actually with the date, there is a problem because we don't know exactly which year I was born in December, yes. December twenty yes. third probably, but old calendar or the new, so I'm not sure exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Could be thirty eight, or could be thirty seven December or January thirty eight, approximately. This is it. That's my date, but uh, officially it's December twenty third, nineteen thirty seven. Nineteen thirty seven, and you don't have an official birth certificate from. There the is no official birth certificate. Can you tell no. us the story about that? Uh, I'll tell you the story. In my village, my name was Gigo Tseklov. Okay. I knew myself as Gigo Tseklov. Now, we did not go to school there. We had, we had no certificates, none, nothing. And uh, there was no school. I remember when I was about seven, we had few classes with Greek language. They, there was the teacher from Greece and uh, few, maybe few few times after after that the partisans came mm -hmm. and uh, we had a Macedonian teacher so Macedonian teacher was actually from my village he was teaching us the Macedonian language and I remember learning the Macedonian alphabet and I put it on, on the wall actually in my in my house mm -hmm. there was there was a space there dark space and I put the Macedonian language I remember that mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's how it was at that time with the languages. Yes, so you don't have a birth certificate no, per se. No, but, no. Uh, because? Because we don't know exactly. Exactly when, there was, there was, you know, nobody got birth certificate at that time. Okay. Actually, when the Pope was coming, actually, the, not the Pope, but the Pope. The not priest, the Pope. yes. No, the priest. When yes. the priest was coming to our, to our house, and uh, he had, uh, he, approximately telling us when and how but they put just actually, actually I went and I requested to get a birth certificate for myself yes I went to my village there I went to the the person who was responsible for that and I looked into the that uh, book and there were names but uh, birth, birth date was just just the year not there was no no month and there was no day. And you saw your name. I saw my name there, and my my parents' name, and my sisters' and brothers' names, uh -huh. and there were actually uh, just 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 uh -huh. just this years. The year. And when was this that you? When went? I when I went there about uh, 1984 or something. Yes, so much after. Yeah, you went. yeah, okay. later on, yeah. And uh, in uh, Statica, where you were born. Uh, what language did you speak at home? Oh, I speak Macedonian, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, do you have any brothers and sisters? Oh, sure, yeah, oh yeah. And can you tell us who they are? And my, the... my older sister is Jana, she mm -hmm. lives in Skopje, and uh, now she's retired. And uh, I have, uh, I have a, a brother, is Risto Czaczkirovski, he lives here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And I have another brother who lived in Skopje, but he died about seven or eight years ago. And my youngest sister is Zosia. Her name is Zosia uh, because she was born in Poland. Uh, when my mother came to Poland, uh, she was pregnant and she delivered the baby there in Poland. So her name is Zosia. Mm -hmm. Zosia Czaczkirowska. And she's here? Yeah, she's, no, she's in Skopje. She's also in Skopje. Yeah, she's Skopje. You said about my name, you see, my name in my village was Ceklo Ceklov. 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 Uh -huh. I didn't know my, my, my real name. Okay. But because this is interesting, I, uh, from when, when we went uh, 
the, uh, when, when we went to Poland, actually we originally went to Yugoslavia, we stayed there a few days, and from Yugoslavia by train we went to Romania, in Cluj. And in Cluj we stayed a few months, few months, and we left, when we left Cluj, we were given some, uh, some boxes or some uh, travel and uh, document, not documents, how to say, uh, valiski, uh, kuferi. Uh, 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 suitcases? Bag, suitcases. Yes. But there were wooden suitcases. Yes. Everybody got one wooden suit, uh, suitcase. And on that suitcase they put the name, you know, of the owner of the suitcase. Mm -hmm. And they put your name there first, you know, Tsaktiris. They put my name Tsaktiris, that was in Romania. Uh -huh. And I went with that name Tsaktiris, I went to Poland. When I went to Poland in, in Londres, Drury, we stayed there. For some reason, I don't know how, my name became Czaczkierowski. So they rewrote it. Someone rewrote it? Some, I don't know how come, but I was given that name, Czaczkierowski. Mm -hmm. Who gave me how, I don't know. But I learned later on that original, my original name was Czaczkierow. Czaczkierow mm -hmm. in my, but I didn't know that name. Okay. Greeks changed to Tsaxiris, and I didn't know that either, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. So on my suitcase was Tsaxiris, that's, that's when I learned that my Greek name was Tsaxiris. <laughs> this is many years, yeah. uh, yes. I'm telling you, after they, 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 they gave me the name Chachkirovsky. But when we had problems with the, with the, uh, the Tito government in Yugoslavia and so on, and uh, we started changing our names to original names. So for a while I became Chachkirov. Again in Poland, I had some documents with this Chachkirov name. Mm -hmm. But when, when, you know, when the relations became better with Yugoslavia, I changed to Chachkirovsky again. Mm -hmm. So now I'm Chachkirovsky, <laughs> see with that name. <laughs> okay, and how about your parents? Who, who are your parents oh, and My parents were was Fide Chachkirovsky. He was born in 19... Uh, I think uh, tw uh, thir 12, I think, yeah, yes. 19, and he was, uh, he, uh, he was, uh, you know, in the partisans, he was killed in the Civil War. He was killed in 1948, 49, I think. Mm -hmm. And who was your mom? My mom is Stila Czaszkirovska. She died in, in Skopje, but she lived here with us too. Mm -hmm. was, uh, what language did they speak? The Macedonian, I'm sure, oh yeah. All their life? Oh yeah, oh mm -hmm. yeah. And um, how about nobody spoke Greek to tell you when I was in Greece, yeah. nobody in my village spoke Greek. Did Every, you, no, didn't nobody. Know. No. Didn't know how no. to. Mm -hmm. And where were your grandparents born? Oh, in my village there too. They, Statica, were, yeah. they were also both oh, in yeah. Statica. Oh, yeah. And who are your grandparents? Well, they're Macedonians. I mean, what yes, nationality? No, or no, what? what names? Do oh, the name. Dedovish. Oh, my mother was Stoyan and Terpa. And my father's was uh, Sveta mm -hmm. and Risto. Okay, and what language did they speak? Oh, the Macedonian, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did they know any Greek? No, I don't think so. No, yeah. no, mm -hmm. I don't think so. And in the village, what language did you speak? Oh, the Macedonian. When you were growing up? I was up? native, actually. There was, that, mm -hmm. well, it was, when I was in, in, in there, when I was in, to tell you the truth, when I was in, in, in my village, we spoke with it, this, this dialect, eh? This is Macedonian dialect. The village because the village dialect. Mm -hmm. Because uh, every village has different dialects. Eh? This is normal. I remember a village close to mine, they had a little different dialect. And uh, they said that this was Bulgarian, eh? When we were there. Uh -huh. Because it was Greasy. And there was conflict between, between you know, Bulgarians and, and Yugos Yugoslavs and, and Greeks. Mm -hmm. You know how it was there. Mm -hmm. so, I knew myself as a, actually, I, I did not know anything about this, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth, but who what, I was. What language did you think but you I were spoke, speaking? But I, I spoke that, now we said it's Macedonian. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how old were you before you had to uh, leave When I moved from Greece? Yeah. Oh, I lived in Greece when I was 10 years old. 10. Oh, yeah. So, uh, up until about 10 years old. Um, can you tell us uh, what you remember in your life of the village? How many 
uh, oh, houses I, or how many people the village was? Oh, I remember. I remember. I remember a lot of actually. Was it a know. big village? No, the village was about five hundred people. Yeah, mm -hmm. five hundred people. Okay. And uh, they all spoke Macedonian, that the native language. And actually, I know lots of them. Tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I know. Right. And when you were a child, mm. uh, what do you remember? For example, who were your friends and what games did you play? Oh, my friends. I had lots of, you know, kids. We played uh, Bishka. One is eh, Bishka. Bishka is like hockey. So it's the a Macedonian. game like hockey? Yeah, no. like hockey. You have to hit a can with a stick and it was called Bishka. And uh, also we cleanza, cleanza, cleanza. This is Macedonian cleanza. It's a, it's a game that you hit a hit a piece of, of of wood or something like this. You have to hit it, eh? Like and baseball. Yeah, it, it's like well, like baseball maybe. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it was a piece of wood, eh? Because there was nothing else there. Yeah, uh, bishka cleanza. What else? So after you hit the ball with the stick, what do you do? You have to run, run, get it again, and you can hit it again, so as far as uh, it can go. Do the children run after the ball that you hit? No, we, we run after the Yeah, we run after So you that. have to come to yeah. home, ho like a home run before they get you the ball? You have to hit it. Yes. And better it falls, and you just go there and hit it again. <laughs> oh, you keep on and hitting you it. You keep on hitting it, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. is the name and of the... That's the name, yeah. And there's another, another game is called Ashik. Can you tell us about that? Ashik, that's Ashik. It's that's that's a Turkish name. Okay. Ashik. Ashik is a, oh you 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 take something like uh, uh, orev, kaku or walnut. Walnut. But inside yes. that stuff. Yes. The, the uh, yes. The, 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 the walnut. Yes. You're taking piece of that and filling it with uh, making a hole and filling it with uh, with uh, soil. Soil. Yes. And we can. He, you know, trying to hit some stones. So the, there was there was some stones on on, on so the you on the side. He had and to hit it hit like the that's stones. right. Okay. It's called Ashik. Ashik. You know, to hit stones on the other side, and who was hitting more stones that he was winning. You know, just going hit it. Hit it like okay. That. <laughs> that's called Ashik. Right. Okay. But there was some other. You know, I don't mm -hmm. remember all of them, but that's what I remember. And do you remember going to school? As I said, yeah, we went few times to a Greek school. When you say few times, do you mean one year or? No, not not one year, a few times. Not one year, maybe maybe days or maybe months. I don't remember exactly, but I remember going to some Greek school because there was a Greek teacher there. Uh -huh. When the Greek, when my village was under the Greeks, eh? But when the, the partisans came, yes. the Greeks were gone. So okay. we had a Macedonian teacher. Okay. So I was uh, learning the Macedonian language. <laughs> So when you were learning uh, the Greek language uh, in the school, I remember any. I don't remember any. You, you don't remember no. learning the language. No, no, I don't mm -hmm. remember. I said few times, so I, I couldn't learn the language. Mm -hmm. Did you learn any Greek? No. No, you didn't no. learn a lot of Greek. Nothing. And um, in so inside the school you spoke Greek, but I was no, 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 no. We don't speak any Greek because we didn't know the well, Greek. Well, you didn't know. No. So no. It, uh, but they tried to teach us Greek. You right. see, because mm -hmm. they sent the. That's what they are doing. They to to learn to teach us Greek. Mm -hmm. So they were sending Greek teachers to the, all these villages. Yes. So that uh, children can they, they they were sending these kids to the school so they can learn Greek. Right. But uh, as I say. My mother, she went to school, I, she, I think, four classes. Mm -hmm. So, so one, two, three. She's, to maybe, maybe she spoke a little bit of Greek, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably she did, probably. A little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, at home you're speaking Macedonian, so I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you about myself, I do not speak any, any Greek. Mm -hmm. So in the schoolyard with the kids, you spoke Macedonian? As far as maybe we were a few times because there was a civil war there. Yes. Actually. Mm -hmm. you, they couldn't teach us anything because the teach ca teacher came. She maybe a few times, and after the partisans came to the village, she was gone. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, you know we were we in Macedonia. Right. After that, the, the government forces came, mm -hmm. and the Greek came again. 
So this time it was. Mm -hmm. And it was when I was, uh, when I was 10 years old when I left. Right. So um, we were not going to school actually. Right. Do I you... had to go and work with my father. Because, yes. you know, there, there was, we have to work. There was no time to, at that time, to go to school. And what did you do with your father? What kind of work? Well, I have to, I have to go to the field, you know, mm -hmm. go to the, uh, to, to the uh, mountain up there to bring some wood, mm -hmm. and to the orame, yes, you to see, plow to plow the fields. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, we go to the mountains where I was six years, seven years old. I, was, I have to get up at six or four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, so what, what, what was your family, uh, uh, what did your family do for a living? Well, it was farmers. Farming, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Tchikirovsky, you mentioned that the, this was a time of turmoil. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, there were, um, uh, first the, the Greeks came and then uh, you mentioned the partisans. When did the partisans come? to the village. Do you remember? Exactly. Uh, no, just no, exactly no. what year? Oh, not 40, 47, 48, I think, yeah, 48. that time, yeah. Uh -huh. I remember, I, I, I'll tell you, because this is important, eh? I remember one, I'll tell you one, one event. Mm -hmm. and I think it was 1948. Not 48, I'm sorry, it was a little earlier than that, because this, that, that's I remember, that was about the Germans, it was not, not 48, but it was about 44 or so, 45, maybe, 44 I think, I think 44. I remember Germans came to my village, the Germans, and they gathered, they gathered all men, and they took them in front, in, close, in, in the, uh, close to the church, behind the church actually, and they wanted to shoot them. Why? They put a machine gun because they say there were some um, partisans. They were against? Yeah, yeah partisans mm -hmm. in, in, in my village and they were fighting the, against the Germans. Okay. So they came, they, they burned the restaurant, they had a small bar actually, there was a small bar there. They burned the, the bar and they, they uh, collected all the women, all men and put them just behind the church and they put a machine gun there because I was close. I was a, I was a young baby what was forty four, about seven about seven years old I think it I was at that so time. You saw the scene. I saw I was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know what happened? The Bulgarians came because the Bulgarians were the, at that time uh, they were collaborating with the Germans, right? Mm -hmm. The Bulgarian army came and they signaled from the mountains they are coming. And they stopped. They did not kill anybody. But the Bulgarians came there. They say that these people are Bulgarians and they leave them alone. So nobody was killed. Tell you the truth. Nobody was killed. And I remember the Germans was going to all these houses and collecting something like eggs, uh, cakes or something to eat. Mm -hmm. I remember they, they came. And they, they put a machine gun in a in front of this, uh, in front of uh, the church, and there was a, a like a tank or something in the center. As mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I remember. And I remember too during the partisan because this is also important. From my village is Yilo Dimov, Dimovsky Goche. He was uh, he was from our village. You know the voivoda, Goche. Mm -hmm. Elon Dimovsky, he, he maybe you, you know him. Yes. Yeah. No, he was no. He was uh, he was actually the Makedonska um, Prva Makedonska Brigada. He was. He was. He was the the leader. He was the, the leader of the. He was the commander. No, commander he, of yeah. the Macedonian contingent of the army. No, it wasn't the first Macedonian uh, brigade. It was the first Macedonian, Macedonian brigade. Yeah, yes. fighting uh, against the against the Greeks. Yes. They were partisans. And it was formed in Bitola. Mm -hmm. The first Macedonian, Prava Makedonska Uderna Brigada, Mr. Svikashti, that was the name. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was the commander of that brigade. Uh, he, was, he was the best known Macedonian commander, actually, mm -hmm. from, from Macedonia, from Greek Macedonia. Yes. And he was from my village. And he was often coming to my village. Yes. And I remember, I remember when I was just sitting close, close on a bench with him. I was close there. Yes. Yeah, I was close there. Yes. And, and Goce 
dim off, Hila Dilo Dimo, we call him. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting beside there, sitting on a bench. Yes. And uh, some some soldiers were coming from the other side because there was, there was a river there in, in the middle. Yes. On the other side of the river, some soldiers coming. And the, he had a dulbia, his the binoculars. Binoculars, yes. And he looked at them because I thought maybe. Who knows who these people were, the soldiers? Mm -hmm. And he looked, looked there and he said, oh no, that's okay, they are partisans. Yes. <laughs> so he was scared, I'm telling you, I was there. Because, you know, this is, this is I think, it's important thing too. Yes, so this, the partisans were fighting against... The Greeks, uh, the Greek army, eh? The Greek army. And oh, yeah. what was the conflict all about? The co oh, the conflict. <laughs> Conflict. This is the whole history, eh? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to this. The no, conflict. I mean, why yeah. was there? Yeah. Yes. But, but I'll tell you one thing, that all these people in my village, mostly men, were members of the Communist Party, the yes. Greek Communist Party. And my father was a member of the Communist Party. Yes. Why? Because they were told that the Macedonians will, will get uh, their language and their rights if there is a liberated uh, Greece. But they'll get autonomy yes. and all the people all the macedonians from 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 the whole macedonia area greek macedonia actually were members of the communist party because this was one party saying that macedonia said their rights and they will have autonomy if there was you know a communist or something so the greek the communist party was fighting with a greek nationalist party That's right. to get power Right? Oh yeah, for power, for, for sure. For power. Yeah. So Macedonians joined because they were promised that's right. that they Don't would get, get their that's right. uh, that's right. language and uh, recognized. Oh, their rights. That's All sure. their yeah. rights. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. So this is why people like your father joined, correct? Oh yeah, correct? that's right. Oh yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, now uh, you mentioned some pictures from your homeland which are quite... Uh, uh, quite sad for a child to witness. Oh, I have lots of lots of memories. I there. was just going to ask: Are there any? You know, there, were, there was a yeah. civil war. I told you another another small story. There was because there was a civil war, and we had to take care of of our um, you know of the how to sell the 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 sheep and the um, well, well go with them. anyway. We have to take care of them. Uh -huh. And I remember I was with my friend. Uh, Close because my village is Dorma Statis and Gorna Statis. I was somewhere in between in the meadows with my cows there and so on. And the from 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 Lerin, they started bombing the area. For, you know, they're bombing because the parties are turned around. Mm -hmm. And the so bombs were falling, yeah. The bomb started falling close to close to us. And I got scared and didn't know what to do, you know. I remember this exactly. And I, I, I actually, I got my friend and we started uh, dancing early in the moment because we were so scared. I'm telling you, right mm -hmm. now, I remember this. Early in the moment, you know the early in the moment. Yes, Mar early in the moment. dancing in the moment. Dancing, yeah. We so scared and they said, scared. Let's, let's get out of here. And you just, you just left that area. But mm -hmm. I remember this because the bombs were falling just close to us. Mm -hmm. Right, so when they say a civil war, they're talking about a civil war in Greece between the Greeks. Greeks and, well, there's a civil war with Greeks and Greeks. But for us, it but, was different. Uh, yeah, but, uh, 80, but they say about 80% or something, they, the, 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 the uh, democratic army, like they say, or, or Macedonians, say. Eh? Because, yeah. they... because Because they promised the Macedonians they will have their rights and so on. Okay. Um, now... Uh, you mentioned that, uh, as I said, we, we talked about some very, um, uh, very troubling uh, scenes for a child to see. Oh. Was there any, can you remember any happy memories of celebrations and uh, oh, events sure. like that? Oh, oh yeah, well, happy memories of playing with kids around the village, <laughs> playing play. Bishka and so on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And going with with you know friends into the mountains, we're taking care of the volovi and so on and offsi and mm -hmm. and and uh, that was we fun. were just going there fun. All of all of actually we all of kids all kids of, the, of that village were going there, you know, in some about eight o'clock, seven o'clock, and we were just taking our volovi and uh, goveda and we were just going to, to the mountains, mm -hmm. and we play there. Mm -hmm. 
Did you come home for lunch? No lunch, no lunch. You no. stayed there. With stayed the there, sure. Actually, we were having torbi with, uh, yeah, with some uh, bread, with bread and, bread and so and on and cheese. Okay, that's all. <laughs> bread and mushrooms. Yeah, we had a torba, they like a sack yes. with the bread and cheese. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all. We were going there and we had some fun. And it was social. That's right. Not only did you watch the cattle, but and I'll tell you there is another story about this. About because we went there, and in our village there is a big stone, just in the mountains there. We call it Stena, Stena, Stena. That's a big stone there, and from one side it looks like a big church, a huge, huge stone, eh? And we were going there, and we could go up on that uh, stone from from uh, from one side, but from the other side we couldn't go because uh, it was high and it was difficult. It was actually we couldn't go there, and there was a hole there, a big hole there, and oral the uh, oral was uh, eagle, the eagle's nest was there, the eagle's nest, and I remember this because because I went there. I don't know how I went there. I, I got to the the egg of that, uh, and I went there, I looked at the eagle, and he looked at me, and he got scared and flew away. And there was a, that big, 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 big egg there. <laughs> <laughs> I got that egg and went up there. I'm telling you now because everybody in my village knows about this story. Okay, And happened? everybody says that, oh, I was there too. Uh -huh. I was there too. And they say, this is the time where people say, oh, one year after Gigo got the egg from the nest. So what did you do with the egg? I don't remember. <laughs> but, but everybody knows that uh, you knows the egg. this story. So yes. all, all people from my village know the story. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, can you tell us uh, uh, how old you were when you had to leave your village? Oh, ten years. Ten, uh-huh. And what do you remember about the exodus of how you left? Oh, this was terrible, eh? I remember we, the, we gathered uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning at the end of the village on the big tree there. And uh, with parents and grandparents and everybody. All the children. Uh, all the children. We were there. I remember this. Mm -hmm. And everybody was crying and kissing each other for the last time. Yeah. Did everybody know what was going to happen? What did people no, think? Not really. You know, I didn't know much about this. What did they tell you? Why did you have to I leave? Did, I don't remember. I don't know. Tell you the truth. Yeah. They, I just remember that I was there. They just took us away. That's all. That's okay. all I remember. When you say they, who? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> My mother probably knows. I was a kid. I didn't know anything about this. Mm -hmm. I know that they, 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 we were there. All of us, all kids from my village, mm -hmm. four o'clock in the morning, and we were just crying and so on. It just took us away. Who I don't know. Yeah. It was organized. Eh? It was organized by the communist party and the partisans. So mm -hmm. all did it, but I did not. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I was as a kid at that time. Right. And I remember going. You know, it was during the night. During the day, you couldn't move there because the planes were going. They, they were shooting people. Okay. So we were moving just during the, during the night. I remember we went from my village, we went to Tarno, there was another village. We stayed there the, during the day and at night we moved mm -hmm. to Preot. There is another place, go close to the Prespa Lake. How did and you we know? were hidden there in, in a, you know, in, in, a, in a, how do you call that? Uh, in a place. In Macedonian? And anyway, we, were, we, we hid there under the trees. Yes. And uh, because uh, during the day, because the planes were moving around, they're bombing, eh? it's, it's, they were looking for us because they knew, the government knew that we are moving, mm -hmm. getting out of there. So they were bombing us. Mm -hmm. So they hid us uh, in, in a, the mountain cave. It wasn't a cave, but it was like, uh, I don't remember mm -hmm. the name of it. Right. And we stayed there, and during the night they took us, and I remember that too, crossing, crossing the, the border between Greek, Greece and, and Macedonia. Mm -hmm. It was during the night, I remember that very well. And uh, because we were scared that during the night, it was close to the uh, Azero Lake. And we were just raka zaraka, holding, holding each other. Hands, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. 
holding hands, we were, we were moving there, and the water was there. That was the first time, the first time I saw the water there, mm -hmm. the Ezero, because I could see that Ezero the, from my, from the mountains, you because we had the big mountains, eh? so you, I was going there and I, I, I could see the press by Ezero from there. And during the night we passed the Tesoro, uh, we passed close to this uh, Marco Vanoga, like they say, and we went to Luboino. It mm -hmm. was 48, it was March about 48. Mm -hmm. And how did you travel at night? Walking. You walked? Walking by Magarena, you see the donkeys. On and the donkeys. You know, the, mm -hmm. Were there any adults with you? Oh yeah, because uh, uh, well, there were groups. From my village there were three groups for, for you know, for about... Uh, 30 kids, Indeed. two or four, four actually. Four groups of about four. 30 yeah, children in this right. group. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, one one was in charge of one mother. We called it Mother Micah. A, a caretaker, a lady. Yeah, a lady, yeah. She was young. The, the Greeks called yeah. it, yeah, Omadarhisa. Mm -hmm. they, they were calling that thing. But we were saying Micah, we called it, we called it Lady. Mm -hmm. Micah, Micah, we because, her mother, yeah, yes. yeah, mother. Mm -hmm. So the mother, she, she has about 30, 40 ages. 48 or 30 kids, eh? mm -hmm. and together from my village was there were about uh, 70. So, 20, 30, 40, 50, that's around, that's mm -hmm. right. About 80 kids. So, you were from about my village. 20 in each group? Yeah, about 20, yeah, mm -hmm. around there, yeah. Okay. And uh, where were your parents while you were traveling like this? Oh, parents, my, my father was a partisan, eh? So he was yeah. in the mountains? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fighting with yeah. the partisans? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. he was a partisan of my mother. My mother, my mother was taken care of. I had another brother, Done. He was about two years old. He stayed, stayed there. But he didn't come with us and he, he died there, actually. As a baby? As, As a, a baby. Young, yeah. he, yeah. During oh, yeah. that time, he died? He was, he, yeah, he died there, yeah, in my village. Do you know how he died? I don't know exactly, but uh, he was hit somehow, I don't know, with what exactly, mm -hmm. okay. but he died there. Uh, and then, um, so uh, you, you started to talk about how you, um, how you exited the village, your village, how you had oh, to... Oh yeah, we went to yeah, Rubo, you know, we went to, we stayed and, a few days, and then and uh, to Bitola, and we took the train from Bitola, we went to Romania. So you were put on trains? Oh with yeah, them? oh yes, yeah. And did you travel with your other siblings? Oh yes, oh yeah. Your, bro your oh, yeah. brother was with oh, yeah. you and your yeah. sisters oh, yes. were with oh, yeah. you? Everybody oh, yeah. was with you? Okay. Oh, yes. we were all together. Okay, and where did your, where did, uh, where was your destination? Romania. Mm -hmm. We went to Romania, Cluj, it's called the name of the bill. Actually, it's, it's a very nice, beautiful city, Romania, Cluj. Mm -hmm. Very nice, university and city. How long did you stay? We stayed there, there a few few months. Mm -hmm. That was from March to about October, March, April, May, June, about five five months, yeah, five six months. There. So you started your schooling there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we we started learning uh, Romanian at that time. Eh? Okay. And started go to school and, and grammar and and everything and arithmetics. Mm -hmm. I remember doing that. And then, why did you have to, was there an explanation why and you had we were, to I'll tell you, <laughs> this is okay. a funny story. Memories from we, there? Yeah, in the Romania. Mm -hmm. In Romania, you know, they tried to indoctrinate us, say, eh, to, to make us uh, commune, you know, you know love the, all these uh, things. Like. And uh, we, we were playing outside, we have to go and play. Yes. And Ora, the Macedonian Ora, they danced, Ora, they yes. danced with all around. And we were shouting, Georg Yudesh, the, pre the, 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 the power in, in Romania at that time was, I think the leader was Georg Yudesh. Okay. And, and his uh, closest was Anna Pauker. I, I remember this too. Mm -hmm. Because we were supposed to call, to, to, you know, to shout, Georg Yudesh, Anna Pauker, uh, Stalin, uh, Stalin uh, Tito Zachariadis, Tito was good at that time. <laughs> So that was 48. Stalin, Tito, Zachariadis, Georgi, Udesh, Anna Pauker. We were all supposed to, to go out and play mm -hmm. and, 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 and shout at this. Uh -huh. And uh. so uh, who was Zachariadis? Well, he was, you know, he was the Communist Party leader, eh? Of the Greeks. Yeah, the Greek Communist Party, yeah. And Nikos Zachariadis. And yeah. they were all together? No, 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 he was not with us. 
he, no, he was the first secretary of the Greek Communist Party, eh? but because uh, we were supposed to honor him, to honor him by calling his name and, and saying, Georgiou des de Jive. And you say, long live, yes, I was saying, long live Georgiou des Anna Pauker, Tito Stalin Zagariadis. Yeah. Remember? Oh yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you remember that from Romania? I remember that, yeah. yeah. And then where did you go from Romania? From Romania they took us, as I say, that's when I learned my name it was Tsakciris, without knowing it. Uh -huh. And from there they took us to Poland. Poland, it mm -hmm. was October, I think, uh, for the 48. Okay, did they take all the children from Statica and from no, other no, Macedonian no. villages? You see, it, when I, it, in Cluj, in Romania, there are a few places where Macedonia children was stayed. Yes. One, uh, one of these was Cluj, that was Kalimanesti, Ploesti, uh, uh, there are some other places too, but, the, but uh, Kalimanesti was the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And Cluj, in Cluj there were about four or five, maybe four villages, that was Statica, uh, there was Zel, uh, uh, Statica, uh, Shestevo, Shestevo, about 80 kids from Shestevo, about 70 kids from Statica, and there were some from, uh, uh, from other, other, other villages, uh, yeah. Other villages. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly, but I know Shestevo for sure, and Statica for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in what language, so, so then uh, they took you to Poland, because there was more room in Poland, what was the reason, do you know? Well, it was 48, it was after the war, the Second World War, all these countries were poor. I remember, I remember we, we did not uh, have anything, actually we had but very, very little to eat, we were hungry all the time. In there was no food, there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. They were giving us Mamaliga, I don't know if you know, know what Mamaliga is. Mamaliga, I said Mamaliga girls, Mamaliga is from uh, corn, corn from meal. corn yes. meal yeah corn, corn meal, meal with with some uh, mil uh, some some milk yes. corn meal and and milk and this like uh, yellow polenta. stuff yeah like polenta yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. yellow yellow like you're giving maybe animals or something mm -hmm. yeah and you remember yeah. eating a lot of oh yeah mm -hmm. there was nothing else okay nothing so you else. ended up we were hungry all the time mm -hmm. and and they re they Communist, probably the Communist Party arranged us to move to Poland from there. Okay. That's why we, we, we didn't know exactly, they were just taking us, that's all, that's all I remember, eh? Who organized it, how they did I have no idea. Okay. And today I, I have no, no idea about my, my name, so... Yes, <laughs> so you ended up in Poland. That's right. So tell us about uh, your, uh, your life there. Oh, Poland was the, Where actually, did you stay? Po Poland was the best place actually for us. Mm -hmm. We we started learning Polish, and the Polish government was very good to to us, and uh, they they gave us education and everything, mm -hmm. healthcare and, and places to stay. Where did and, you stay and, in Poland? Well, as I say, Londex Drury was first, and after we went to went to Zgorzelec. There is another place. Mm -hmm. Zgorzelas was a place for all people from Greece. There was a gathering mm -hmm. uh, place for people from Greece. There were soldiers, there were, you know, actually the Irani, the, the, the uh, Partizani who came to Poland, and uh, kids, and everything. they had their community there too. Mm -hmm. The Greek community was called. They had their actually government there. They organize everything for, for, for so people. The Communist yeah. Party. The Communist Party. That's right. They, headquarters. No, they or were, just like a, a, an office. No, they, they, there were people who were organizing this uh, community. Like it was a city, eh? Okay. It was German before. German moved from there. Place was almost empty. So we went there. We occupied, occupied that area. Mm -hmm. I know they placed us in this uh, Kasarni for soldiers. Uh, Barracks. Barracks, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where we stayed. Okay. And... One, one, one was uh, uh, Zachariadis, so the small kids were there in Zachariadis, and the other one was Terpovsky. You see, they give it that the Macedonian name. Mm -hmm. Terpovsky, that's the Macedonian, Lazo Terpovsky, they gave that name to all their, all their children, mm -hmm. and they stay there, they have to learn to, you know, to go to school, to, to go to... to yes, in what language was your education in no, Polish? No, in Polish. 
Polish. Polish. Did yeah. you have? Did you have to? Uh, were you able to learn Macedonian or? We had Macedonian language lessons in Macedonia, Macedonian or in uh -huh. Greek too. Oh, you also had to learn. Oh Greek? yeah, Greek too. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. We had to learn Greek and Macedonian. Okay. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your um, your schooling in Poland? Well, but uh, my my schooling. Yes. As I said, when I was in the children's home. Yes. I'm telling you, depending how the waves were moving. The politics. Well, politics, you see. Yeah. We were supposed, originally we were Macedonians, say. Eh? Yes. But with Tito or something, they, were, they say that he was still not good. So they say, well, we are Bulgarians now. So we became Bulgarians for a while. And as I say, we were originally, they were teaching us the language and grammar of the Macedonian, for the Republic of Macedonia grammar, mm -hmm. the original one. Yeah. But there was something there, you know, not uh, the, 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 the Tito was, they say, not good. So they say we, we became Bulgarians. And they changed the grammar. I remember this because we, we had lessons, eh? They changed the grammar from the Macedonian original to another one based on the Russian language. Mm -hmm. Russian language. So I remember they have to learn the Glagol, uh, that's Russian, eh? Yeah. Russian and, and, mm -hmm. and then trans and we had the grammar in Macedonia and it was published in Romania. Yes. And there was there was and after after a few years when, when Tito you know was again with us he was a good again so they say now we are again Macedonians right. <laughs> so we changed from name from Bulgaria to Macedonia. So again. you started to from yeah the that's what I, I was doing uh, that, that, uh, yeah I was doing the same. right from the Bulgarian grammar you change back to the Macedonian. to the Macedonian uh -huh. only to the grammar the names too because this is important eh because we had Macedonian names. And after the names to be changed to Bulgarian, like the Chotskirovsky to Chotskirov. <laughs> and after that, uh, we change again to Chotskirovsky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, were you separated from your mother and your father? Oh, yeah, time? sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, in, 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 in uh, Poland, uh, I met my mother there. She came. She was with partisans and she came to Poland. Uh, uh, and she came to Zgorzelec and I met her there. And uh, did she come to visit you or that's where she stayed? We stayed in the children's home there and it was surrounded with, with wire. We, we could not get out of there. Mm -hmm. We could not go and see our parents. And because this is, you know, this is very also important. I remember first time when I saw my mommy, my mother, uh, because there was a wire, eh? we couldn't go out. And she was on the other side of the uh, wire, fence. I was on the other uh, fence. It was like, you know. A wire fence. Yeah, wire mm -hmm. fence, that's right. And I, you know, uh, this is emotional. I don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, now with the um, so that's your mother came to see you from yeah, time that's to right. time. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And you had your siblings there. Were your siblings all in the same uh, in the same uh, children's home, or were they separated? There were by I tell you in Poland there were about three thousand children, Macedonian and Greek. Mm -hmm. in Poland, 3,000 about, because I have, I have lists, I have the names of these children. Mm -hmm. I have the names, I, when, because when, when I came here, I became interested for all these matters, eh? and I wanted to know the names and who live there and faces and, and pictures of all these mm -hmm. kids from, because uh, we, we live there like a big family. I, I probably knew all of them, a few thousand, about, as I say, 3,000 kids and 1,500 were Macedonians. 1,500 were Macedonians, about 1,500 Greeks. And we were together. And there were, let's say, there were the barracks, say, eh? and the barracks were the houses. We had in, in Zachariadis, there were about six or 10, about 10 houses. So kids, the smaller one was in one, that's a bigger one is it was in the other and and so on eh? yes i was in in Zgorzelec in uh, uh, zachariadis i was in in the barrack mm -hmm. five fifth barrack and uh, there were kids from uh, uh, about 12 years old mm -hmm. about there right yeah. so um when when did you uh, how did your education proceed in poland well we finished i, I finished the high school there in, in Szczecin, 
Because from Zgozhelets we went to police and from police to Chechen. That was uh, to police, we went, uh, I think, uh, 51. And uh, I finished grade six, uh, grade uh, five and six in police. And from police I moved to Chechen. Chechen is on the Baltic Sea, very nice, beautiful port city. So uh, we moved there and I finished my grade seven in Chechen. And from there I went to, to gymnasium, to high school. I finished high school in Chechen. And you were living in the children's home? I, I lived in children's home all the time. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, children's home. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I finished that high school, and from there I went to uh, apply to the university, Academia Medicina. Mm -hmm. I, I applied for the medical academy there in Chechen. Yes, and did you get I graduated? Accepted? Yeah, I, I, I finished actually. I was there four years in Chechen, and I, from there I moved to Warsaw. So I you finished to, yeah. your, your medical degree in, in Warsaw? In Warsaw. Yeah. And this was for a dentist? No, no, I was a general No, 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 I was a medical doctor. Right? Well, a medical doctor, oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, so, how old were you when you arrived in Poland and then you stayed how many years? Well, we stayed in Poland about 17 years. Yeah. 17 years? Yeah, from uh -huh. 48 to 66, actually. I, I graduated from the Medical Academy in Poland in Warsaw in 64. Yes. And uh, I worked there for two years as a medical practitioner. I was a uh, physician there. In 66 we moved from, we applied to, to go to Macedonia, to Yugoslavia. Yes. So 1966 we moved from, from Chechen to Skopje. Mm -hmm. So you you had you, you stayed in Poland for quite a while. Oh yeah, about seventeen years. Oh yeah. Yes, and uh, during this time, were you? Uh, yeah, I was using a Polish. I was just at home. We spoke Macedonian at home, but we were using a, a general on the day a Polish. Language. So when did you reunite with your mother and your family? Actually, when I when I finished schooling, I went to live with her. From uh, 64 to 66, I stayed with my mother. And she was living in Poland? Yeah, in, in Polizia, in Poland, yeah. Right. And then you... We were together. My family was together at that time, again. 64 to 66. Mm -hmm. And um, so, now, during this... When did you meet your wife? Oh, my wife. I, <laughs> my wife. She's actually here with me, eh? Yes. Can you tell us she, the She was, she was uh, with me at that children's home. Yeah. Right from the beginning? Yeah. From the, actually, actually, she came a little bit later because I came to Poland 48, I think she came to 49. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, you know, because uh, she was, uh, you know, younger than me, she, she was together with, with this young, young, young girl, say, eh? you all the us, time. Can you tell us but, her name uh, and what village oh, Fana, she came oh, from? Oh, 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 her name is Fana mm -hmm. uh, and Miloševska. Miloševska, she is from Buf. Okay. From Buf. And she came in 1949 to Poland. Yeah. Actually, I met her when I was in Szczecin, when I was in high school. And she was there. You were in the same uh, high yeah, school? Yeah. Not the same, no. She's, yeah. She was three years younger than me. Okay. No, no. She was, she was going to a different school. But you were both in homes? But both the same home. Children's well, home. You eh? lived in the same yeah, home. That's right, yeah. Children's home. Uh huh. Actually, I met her, uh, I, you know, acquainted more her when I was uh, living in Pulisa. And my mother lived there, and her mother lived there. Uh -huh. And actually, we are good friends with, uh, with her brother, Sime Miloševski. Mm -hmm. Sime was her yeah, brother. So we were very good friends with him, going together. So I was going to see uh, his family, and he was coming to my family, and uh, we, we became friends with, with her. And that's how it started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, uh, when did you get married? Um, 60, actually, I mean 64, eh? Yeah. And was that in Poland? Oh, yeah, in Poland, yeah. So you got married in Poland? Polizia, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, um, tell us then how, uh, how you went to Macedonia. Actually, we, well, we were, uh, I'll tell you, there are so many stories. You know, when I was in police, I'll tell you this story because it's also important, yeah. When we were in police, you know, because of politics, politics, there were some Macedonians, they wanted to form an organization, Macedonian organization, because the Greeks, we don't like too much Greeks, because we all were fighting between Macedonians and Greeks. 
and uh, the Macedonians in probably said they are older that they formed the Macedonian organization, mm -hmm. Macedonian organization, and uh, <laughs> I remember I, I was I was working at that time, and. Uh, the member of that organization in, in, in police was Petr Narkovsky. He was a Petr, Petr he was he, he was in Poland and he was a Masonian ambassador in, in Poland after that eh? because now he's a he he's a, a writer in Macedonia, very well known writer, Petr Narkovsky, <laughs> his name is here. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, I remember we had a party and he was at that party and uh, he he spoke a little bit and there was a poem something he was saying in that party and after that it was a night he said Gigo come out they say what for I will talk about it we went out you know Gigo he said I know about you because I have so many problems there I know about you and we have a, we formed an organization Macedonian organization and we would like you to join it and I say um, what kind of organization? He said, well, you have to come and talk about it. So, <laughs> you know, he told me, take your brother too if he wants to come to talk. It was a secret, eh? It was a secret uh, organization. Oh yeah, secret. Oh yeah. It wasn't allowed originally by, by anybody. By but the, probably they, it was connected with the uh, uh, embassy in, in, in Warsaw. I think they organized this anyway. Mm -hmm. The Macedonians from the embassy. It was Yugoslav, but you know, Macedonians were there. And he said, you know what, Gigo, come in, and I think you, you can be a member of that organization. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we know that you are, you would th they, yeah, I'll have to tell you this story again. When I was there, for some reason, they called me Titovets. I was, I was a kid there, I was, I was what, about 12 years old. And because of this, this all this politics, they say, well, look out for, for enemies of the communist, communist system. Look, so all these people, the children, you know, children, even those spies there, and the, the teachers and the, the caretakers, they will look into maybe there is something against that communist system. I don't know why, well, I don't know why they made me Titovets. Titovets means that I was with Tito at that time that I like his uh, politics and so on. When you say they, who are they? Like the teachers or the... Uh, you see, there was children, okay? It was a big, big place in, in, in police. Children's homes, about, about maybe 20. Yes. So about, there were about a few thousand kids there. And they had their teachers, Macedonian teachers, Greek teachers, and they have the Vichovavci, the uh, the caretakers okay. and they have the, the directors and so on mm -hmm. and so these people were taking care of the children eh? and they have to look if there are enemies of the state enemies of the system and for some reason they said that I was an enemy of the system and they called me Titovets you know what they did? They, they, because I was with my, with my peers, eh, with my same age kids, I was about 13 years old at that time. They, what they did, they, they took me from, from my colleagues, from my, you know, my colleagues, my, my friends. From your friends. Yeah, and they put me in a house with children, small children, four or five years old. I was only one. <laughs> So, so I won't sell, you know, sell the Tito propaganda. That's what they are saying. You know, I, I won't sell it to other friends of mine. That's what they did. That was Titovets, you see, at that time. And that's why Spetter knew about this. And he said, I know about you. You should join the organization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I, and I remember this because this is, this is funny. Eh? I went to his house because he lived there close. Uh, I went to his house, He's, he lived with his, and he was married at that time, with Dita, Dita was his, his wife. And, uh, and his, uh, his parents were there actually. And they took me to one, in, in one um, uh, uh, place there, there was a room, and there was a Macedonian flag there. <laughs> that, uh, what was the Macedonian flag with the, uh, um, 
I think there was something there, there was something to see there. There was the, the Macedonia flag, yeah, from Millington, like Macedonians, you say, uh -huh. the flag. And flag, then you should yeah. take an oath to this flag. <laughs> I'll tell you this. <laughs> I said, I, okay, so whatever they were saying, I was repeating. They told me what to say, I saw. I said whatever they were selling me. And I became a member of this organization, and, uh, and, uh, and I went home and I said, you know, I, to, I told my brother, you know, there is somewhere you should join that organization. <laughs> but, you know, they learned the Communist Party and those, because there were people like, spying around. They learned about this. And, and, Remember, uh, 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 Narkovsky Petr called me again, Gigo, you know what? We should stop the organization because they know they are going to arrest us. <laughs> so we stopped this organization, you know, that this was something I'm telling you. And from, he was, because he was probably with the embassy. And after that, he moved to Yugoslavia because they were going to be arrested. <laughs> just again, the visa is just, left to Yugoslavia, <laughs> and we stopped that organization. Um, this is something too, eh? Mm -hmm. So the organization was a pro, uh, was a Macedonian organization? Oh yeah, pro, and, uh, pro Yugoslavia, pro Macedonia. Pro, yeah, pro Macedonia. Macedonia. Oh, yeah. And uh, the Greeks didn't like that, the Greek communists oh, didn't yeah, like that. Oh yeah, sure did not like so it. So oh, they yeah. even arrested or oh, yeah, threatened. They were, they were fighting between Macedonians and Greeks because of the language and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. We did not, did not like them and they did not like us. Right, and this the war had finished now, so oh, they were finished. Was, yeah. You were with the children's home, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you were aware of what had happened. They did not want us to speak Macedonian. They say you are Greeks. They kept on insisting. Oh yeah, insisted that, that you are Greeks. I'm telling you, I have good friends from there. I have good, real good friends because we were together, eh? Good friends. I'll tell you this another story. We were friends, we were going sports, doing sports and, and, and walking around and so on with a, with a friend of mine, he was a Greek, uh, he was a friend of mine and as I say, once at night, for, we just went out and started talking politics and uh, you know what said, you know, I said, I'm Macedonian, he said, you know, yeah, you're not Macedonian, he said, Greek, you're Greek. And I say, what Greek? I say, Solon, that's Macedonian place. And I say, if, if, if Macedonia liberates completely, I think Solon will be, will be our, our the, um, capital. capital, eh? He said, no, <laughs> this is Greek, they say, you know? And the other day we were not friends anymore. Not friends, and until now we are not friends. And he lives in Greece now, and I live here. I try to contact him. He doesn't want to talk. And, but I, had, I have another friend too, we were going together at the same school, uh, uh, gymnasium, like high school, another one. Uh, he was with my Baristo, they, they, they went to the same school, they graduated together. And we were very good friends, but we did not talk politics with him, so we were just friends. And he moved to Greece, now he stays in Poland, but he goes to Greece. I found out the reason about him, I called him, and I say, you, where are you from? I asked him, he said, oh, I'm, I'm from Macedonia. Where I say in Macedonia? He said, close to Grevena. Now, Grevena is a very big city in Macedonia, south, close to the border with Greece. Yes. He said, I, I am from a village, Spileo, in Grevena. I say, okay, he said, you are, he said, you are what? I say, I'm Macedonian. He said, so, so I'm Macedonian too, he said. Just few, few, yeah, few, yeah. few days ago? Few, yeah, few days ago. He said that, uh, who I am, do you think, he asked me. I said, if you're born in Macedonia, I said, you're in Macedonia. Yes. <laughs> That's what I told him. And he, you know, he said, he said, okay, I'm Macedonian too. You know, but he, you know what he told me? But uh, he's a Macedonian that's Greek. And he said, we, we live together in, in police. We were just like one, one big family. Oh. But family, but Greek family, you see? They all, they, they told all are Greeks there, no Macedonians. But they told him, you know what, my friend, okay, we are from Greece, but we speak, we spoke Macedonian, and you didn't. You just spoke Greek only, no Macedonian. Oh, he said, yeah, you're right. 
And that's the finish of this. Now we are not talking about it anymore. Mm -hmm. But he said that he's Macedonian too because he's born in Macedonia. So all people born in Macedonia live there are Macedonians, right? Like we are here, we are Canadians, we live in Canada, I said I'm Canadian too. But <laughs> he was born in Macedonia, he's Macedonian. Maybe he speaks Greek, but he's Macedonian, eh? Right. <laughs> so when you went to Macedonia, um uh, what, what? I like to find my friends from Poland. I'm telling you, I, I love to to see my friends from Poland, from uh, from high school, from Dechki mm -hmm. Domowy, from this children's house because I I knew most of them. Yes. And and I became uh, my hobby to find out where they live, what they do, how they are doing. You know. Yes. What they did. You know, I was just curious about this because I, I actually I, I love them. Uh, because it was my, I really think there was, there was a big family. We were living together, uh, playing together, going to school and so on, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I went, I went to lots of places because I, I, I like doing that. Poland and and, and, and Russia and and states and and, uh, and Australia and everywhere where there were some friends. And I was going and visiting them and taking pictures, uh, old pictures from Poland and so on, collecting them. So that's why I have a few thousand of these pictures. Eh? I have probably I have all this uh, uh, this uh, uh, in pictures. All these children, probably I have them. Mm -hmm. I don't know all of them, but I when I went to Poland because I was interested. I went to Poland. I went to the archive, archive, Polish archive, mm -hmm. archive. Right. In mm -hmm. and I found the list of all these Macedonians who moved to Poland from 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 Romania because to go uh, there is another story I'll tell you about this to go from one country to another you have to have a passport right mm -hmm. now because we were in Romania in Cluj Romania there were a few thousand there and they we didn't have any documents no passports, nothing. So they just, just put it in the train and they, we just moved to Poland. And But we had to have the passport. But we didn't know about this, eh? I didn't know. But when I was became interested about, you know, finding out about these people, the, the, my colleagues in Poland, I went to the Polskie Archivum. I went to the archives in Poland. And I found out, actually, Peter told me, I found out the passport, the original passport from, uh, we got from Romania when we moved to Poland. And it was a big book like this. And there was a and name. Name, it, it was a uh, general passport for everybody. For everybody, and everybody's name was written. Everybody's out. name was in there. Yes. And there was a name, last name, first name, last name, uh, date of birth. So date of, about date of birth, I can tell the stories about that too, but I'm telling you, there was a, there was a date of birth, they have, to, they have to put a date. So it was fictional anyway, mm -hmm. approximately. Mm -hmm. and, and village, place of birth, mother's name, father's name. They, they had to be there. Mm -hmm. So it was a big book like this. So I went into that archive, and I took that book, and I stayed there about seven days to write everything from that book. And when you when you saw the name of the villages next to your name, was it written in Macedonian, Statica? Or oh, Statica, was it Statica. Statica. No, no, all in Macedonian. No. It was in Macedonian. In Macedonian. And was it Gigo? Gigo Kaczkirovsky. Okay. That was Kaczkirovsky. So from uh, Romania, it was written yeah. in Kaczkirovsky. Yeah, just on my suitcase was Taksiris, but when I moved to Poland, officially in the document, in the passport, mm -hmm. it was Kaczkirovsky. But I didn't know that, you know, eh? <laughs> yes. Okay. And let's uh, go a little bit forward now. Uh, ha you went to Macedonia. You you left Poland and you went to Macedonia with your family. Yeah. Did you have children by then? Oh, yeah. I have two daughters. Yeah. They were both born in Poland? Yeah. And what made you decide to go to Macedonia? Well, I, I just wanted to go to my place uh, in the Macedonia. I was a Macedonian. And I thought that probably my place would be Macedonia, eh? Mm -hmm. Was there and anybody in Macedonia to... Well, I, I had some relatives there. I had some relatives. But not because of my relatives, I was going because of Maced uh, because I felt I was a Macedonian. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that uh, the best place for me to live was Macedonia. And you reunited with some of your siblings? Like you, you were together? No, we were together. All, all of us together, yeah. Everybody together. So yeah. were you part of the Red... You, you were not part of the Red Cross and... Uh, 
when they um, started to reunite the families? No, no, Your no, family no, no, was no, we were there all, no, you we were, were in Poland, yeah, there was no, not, no, no reunification with anybody. Yeah, do you remember anything there about the Red Cross being involved? That was about 50, 55, 55, 56, mm -hmm. there was a, a you know, a, because, because of the civil war, people were, you know, separated. divided families, separated, separated it was yes. separate. Like mother was in Yugoslavia, and kids were in, in Poland. You see, in the, and they, in the 56, around 55, 56, I think, they, they decided to reunite the families. In the Red Cross? Yeah, so, okay. yeah that's, mm -hmm. and the Red Cross was involved. Mm -hmm. okay. So people, let's say, I remember I have some friends from, from uh, Shostevo, mm -hmm. good friends from Chechen, they moved to Czechoslovakia. And from, they were from Czechoslovakia, they moved to Poland. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, I don't know exactly, but probably kids were moving to, to their parents. The kids were taken yeah, to the parents. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I remember. I, I remember. Now I, I'll tell you one thing that uh, I remember. A good friend, or, not good friend, but a friend. A from from the mm -hmm. She moved from from Poland to Czech, to, to Czechoslovakia. That kind of, Czechoslovakia, mm -hmm. and uh, she was. Uh, uh, Lubka Rondowska, her name, I'll tell you that name, because this is also important. Her name was Lubka Rondowska, from Szesztewo. She moved from Poland to Czechoslovakia, to Prague, to Prague, she went to Prague, Prague, eh? And she, she go to, went to the University of Finnish, graduated there, and from there she moved to Bulgaria, to Sofia. She, well, she moved to Soviet and she became a member of the Gotze, I think Gotze Dutch of uh, Ensemble. Uh, dancing uh, group? Dancing yes. group, yeah. I think Gotze Dutch is called. Uh -huh. In Skopje, in, 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 in Sofia. Mm -hmm. And she was the principal singer of that group. Mm -hmm. So she is a famous now, they say, uh, national singer, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Of uh, Bulgarian origin, you see, that's why. And her name was changed from Rondovska to Rondova. Mm -hmm. Lubka, it was, she, she was Luba Rondovska in Poland. Now she moved to, to Bulgaria in Sofia, and she's Lubka Rondova. Mm -hmm. And she's famous, I don't know if you know her, but she's in and she's on the internet or YouTube, you can find her. She, and she was, she was at the, uh, the Union of Children. Uh, I think it was in 19, 1998. She came from from Skopje, from Sofia to Skopje, and she was seen in the reunion. She was there in this Macedonian, mm -hmm. uh, you know, clothes the and so on. Yeah. Reunion? In yeah. when it was no, 98. 98? 1998. The second reunion. The second. And she came one, you know. I'll, I'll tell you this why. Because she's from Shustevo, she's from Greek Macedonia, it's been, uh, Macedonia, Greek Macedonia. And because she is in, in, in Bulgaria, now they say there is no Macedonia, Greek, this is Bulgaria. And I'll tell you what, she was on, the, she was on TV, on the Bulgarian TV, because I have this, on, I got it from the YouTube. And she, they were asking her, what are you? What are you? And she, she did not want to say, because she was you know, on TV, in the Bulgarian TV. Mm -hmm. And they knew that she was at the Union. And they knew that she's Macedonian. And she knew that she's from Shostevo. And they were asking, what are you? What do you think you are in Bulgaria? She said, you know what? My parents were from my village and they spoke Bulgarian at home. Mm -hmm. You know, and during the 40s and 50s, we were saying that we were Bulgarians at that time. That time it was. <laughs> And they say, my parents were Bulgarians, you know, they spoke Bulgarian in my village. And okay, they say, but how about you? What do you think? What do you speak? Mm -hmm. and, and, and she didn't want to say anything because she, she, didn't she felt that she was Macedonian. Yes. But she, they wanted her to say that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what she did? I, 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 can, I can sing. But she did not say anything about it, if she was Macedonian or Greek mm -hmm. or, or, or Bulgarian. Bulgarian. Right. That, okay. This is this is this also funny. Eh? Yes. This is history. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And then when you went to Macedonia yeah. with your family, what was it like there? How long did you stay? Ah, uh, in Macedonia originally it was terrible. Tell you the truth. Yeah, we did not have any place to stay. They put her in a small room, 
there was no heating and uh, it was Prihvatilisha, it was named, they, they, they called it. Mm -hmm. And Prihvatilisha, that was uh, and then one small room, we had nothing. Mm -hmm. And you stayed? No, I think to, you, we stayed there for, for a while and I, uh, uh, yeah. Eleven months stay there. Mm -hmm. Eleven months, but well, she remembers. Yeah. And uh, I'm telling you, there was no heat in there. And we had nothing, to, not much to eat, no much support. I'll tell you how like, lucky it was because also we were hungry at that time. We didn't have money to buy bread. W were I'm you able you. to get a job as a doctor? No, I was I was a doctor there, but I was not uh, legally. Uh, um, I could not work legally in Macedonia because I have to get certified again yes. as, a, as a physician. Yes. So I, I was not working. Mm -hmm. I went there. I was not working. She was not working. We had kids. Yes. There was no support. Yes. And it was terrible. That's mm -hmm. all I can say. Originally, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and because it was during the Samu Prabhuvanya, I'm not blaming anybody, mm -hmm. but it was a period of Samu Prabhuvanya. There were, you know, there were putting people, uh, whatever, they, you know, family connections and so on. Mm -hmm. So we had no connection, nothing. I couldn't, couldn't find any work. Mm -hmm. I was a physician. I, 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 I had my certificate done. Everything mm -hmm. was okay, but I couldn't find work there. And you stayed there for 11 months? I stayed months, for yeah. about, yeah. About I stayed there year. for about a year, no work, nothing. And we, I was planning to move, either to Poland or to go to immigrate, to Greece or somewhere. Because yes. there was nothing we couldn't eat, there was nothing, you know, money. How did you decide to come to Canada? And after, you know, I'll tell you, because I applied, I, applied, I actually wanted to move from there, because it was, it was not good. And you have to find connections. As I say, some Uprava, that was terrible, period. Some Uprava in, in Yugoslavia and Macedonia was terrible. And... Uh, we have we found some connections we have to sell some guns and so on to some people give money like mm -hmm. terrible and we i was uh, I started working in a in an emergency in skopje and uh, these connections <laughs> yes. you know, it was <laughs> you have to do that and i started working in emergency and uh, because we had we had relatives in, in, in Canada, actually she has, she has relatives. Your wife has. Yeah, relatives. my wife. Yeah, uh -huh. and uh, he said, let's let's move out of here because it was not we had problems there. Mm -hmm. We have to sell everything on the big bazaar, whatever they had from Poland, they could just go on there and sell, mm -hmm. and then so on, and so on. And we decided to move to get out of there. In Macedonia, where did you live? In Skopje. In Skopje, huh? So you got sponsored by your wife's uh, relatives? In Canada, yeah. To oh, come yeah. to Canada? Yeah. And did yeah. that go smoothly? Everything worked out? Actually, actually, we applied to, to go to Australia or, or Canada. We had some relatives in Australia, mm -hmm. in Melbourne, and we had some relatives here. We applied to Australia and to Canada. Mm -hmm. And we got, you know, uh, we were to, yeah, we got visa or for either. Landed either. in yeah, status. Yeah, mm -hmm. for Australia and for Canada. Hey, why did you choose Canada? I don't know why, uh, because it's closer probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and uh, she has more relatives here in, 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 in Toronto. Yes. And we came here. And who met you here when you arrived? Oh, her relatives, actually, first cousins, and, and friends of mine, because some. You know, some, I have some friends to here. From Poland? Well, from Poland. They mm -hmm. moved to Canada and actually mm -hmm. they came to meet me there, mm -hmm. at the airport. So tell us about how you, you settled in Canada. What no, originally he was, <laughs> you know, it was a terrible life, I'm telling you. When I came here in Canada, actually, I could not find any work either. We have to, I, I, you have to speak English. I also went to learn English as a second language. I, I, had, I took that course. After that course, we, we have to nostrificate, to nostrify, you know, to, to my, my, my diploma. Your medical so you have to diploma. medical diploma, you have to start studying again. So I, I started studying again and uh, I, I actually, I had an exam here and uh, I, I, I did not, I didn't do well, I think the first exam here 
and uh, they say, what the heck, I cannot go work, any. I, I went to looking for work in the States, maybe I'll find somewhere there. And uh, I went to Rochester and, and so on in uh, Buffalo, nobody wanted me, you know, you have to have connections, you know, like everywhere. Nobody knew me and say you were, oh, language is terrible and so on. And uh, I came back and said, what the heck, I'm not going to stay here, I'm going to go back to Skopje. <laughs> Back to Skopje. Well, sure, I came here in 1970. Yes. And because of all these problems, say I'm gonna go back. And I went back. To, I went to Skopje again. With your whole yeah. family? Actually, I came alone here originally. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Oh, okay, no. I came alone here to, to see how it is. You know, if, if I can find anything to work or something. My family stayed there. And uh, as I say. There was nothing here. I said, okay, I'm going to go back to Skopje. And uh, I went back, actually. I went to Skopje. I went to emergency started working again there. And I had a friend here who moved to New Brunswick because he couldn't find the work here, too. He was a doctor, medical doctor, friend of mine. And he said, you know, Gigo, he called me, you know, Gigo, come here. There is a place for you in New Brunswick, Campbellton. <laughs> you know, Campbellton, New Brunswick. So I just took a, bought a ticket and I came back again. I went to Campbellton, New Brunswick. By yourself? <laughs> By myself, sure. I mean, I cannot take my family and without work, without anything. They stay there. I had to send them whatever I have, my money, whatever they were getting. I was selling weeks and so on, buying and selling there. And she, went to, she was not working much, you know, she, she had problems there too. Anyway, I came here, I went to New Brunswick and I started working as an intern in a hospital there. And uh, after that, I say I have to take the, 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 the exams here. So I took, I went to Montreal with that friend of mine and I passed the exams there. And uh, I said, okay, when I, when I passed the exams, I came to Toronto and I had to take LMCC the license here too, to, to, to work here, because I had the license to work in New Brunswick. In Canada, you know, at that time that you have, you could, you could work just in one province, so you cannot work in the other. Even if you graduated, let's say, I had the license to work in New Brunswick, but I couldn't work in, 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 in Ontario. And what did you have to do? I have the license to, I have to pass exams again. Again? Oh yeah, right. sure. And how did that go this time? Better? No, yeah, I passed them. Yeah, I came here, I did it, and okay, I stayed. <laughs> Okay, and then, then I, I became an intern at the Toronto Center, and after that, you know, everything. I, I, my, my family came in there in 74. 74, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and we were together. Where did you live when your family first came here? In Toronto? In Toronto? Well, actually, you know, I was I was a intern, or internship at East General, and I had a little bit of money. His brother, because we were here, his brother came from Australia his brother, mm -hmm. and when I was here, I was living at, you know, in the hospital. I was an intern there. So we had to stay there and work. Because, you know, sometimes you work in 24 hours, every second day. So we, we had living and, and everything. We lived there and stayed and eat and everything, so no problems. And when your family you know, came? When, when his brother came, her. Uh -huh. yeah, when, when her brother came, he, he wanted to buy a house. So he said, you know, you go, the houses were about 20,000 at that time. <laughs> and no down payment. You know, I had some money that I gave me to whatever I had here, and he bought a house. <laughs> Her brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He got the mortgage and the down payment, mine, and his, and so on. And then that's when I went to stay there when I, when I graduated, when I finished my internships. I stayed with, with, her, with her brother for a while, and after that, we, we bought a house and I started working. Where was her brother's house? In Blanche, A14 Blanche, yeah. In Scarborough? Yeah, in Scarborough, yeah. Scarborough. Yeah. And then you bought your house in Scarborough as well? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where was your house? Well, actually, the first house was close there. It was, uh, it was on Clita Drive. Clita, I think it was uh, Kennedy, 14. No, Kennedy 14 and uh, St. Clair? Kennedy and St. Clair, that's right, Clita okay. Drive. Lots of Macedonians. Yeah, yeah, that's in that area, yeah. We, uh, we, we bought a house there, and after a few years, uh, we moved here. Yeah. We moved to Braeburn, actually. Yes. There was another, we bought another house there. Scarborough again. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. and from mm -hmm. Braeburn we to Fairway. After two years, we moved to, we bought mm -hmm. a big house. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And um, uh, when you were very busy as an in, as an intern, when did you start? Uh, when did you open your practice? Because I know you had a very successful uh, practice. Oh well, uh, actually, seventy seventy five. That's when I got my license. Seventy five, and I started working at in Bimbrook here with Dr. Starkovsky. If you know Dr. Starkovsky, he said, you know, come here and we'll work together. I moved to Bimbrook and I stayed there for a few months and I said, and, and, and another friend of mine, Dr. Michalidis, said, you know, you have come to my place and we'll buy another, we'll buy a building and we'll, we'll, we'll work together. And in uh, 76, I moved there to Danforth, Pape and Danforth. And you were there for and how I, long? I was there from 76 until I retired, eh? 2000 and, uh, 2004. Mm -hmm. yeah. I moved, I stayed there. Yes. And uh, all this time... And your parents were my patients. <laughs> I'll tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> tell, say that again, sorry. Your parents, I think your mother was my patient, eh? Yes. Actually, I can tell you the two. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and... Um, uh, during this time, as you had your, uh, I scared you. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. As you had your successful practice, uh, were you in? My 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 patients were Macedonians, Polish, Greek. I had few Canadians. So you see, when I was working, I just spoke Macedonia mostly in Greek and Polish. Mm -hmm. And some Russian too, because I speak lots of languages. I have Croatian Serbs. I have lots of Serbs because you know I lived in Macedonia, so I speak Serb Croatian. So I have Serbs, Macedonians, Greek, Pole, and few Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> you had a real healthy and my, my secretary was my, my wife was my secretary. She did not speak any English. So <laughs> that's how it was. You see. But you worked well together. Yeah, sure. Very we did. well. Yeah. And um, as you uh, worked, uh, I know you worked hard. But in your spare time, uh, were you involved? Uh, what was your involvement in the Macedonian community? Uh, to tell you the truth, I was not much involved in the community. I was a member. I'm a member of the, of the church here. I'm the, a member of the United church? Macedonians. Yeah. The and I paid something there. Yeah, my, I, uh, uh, I'm a physician, and I was mm -hmm. a doctor. I was not involved much with this politics. So you didn't have time to get. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, were you involved with the Detsa Begelsi organization? Not much. My brother was involved with that, so yes. I was supporting them, mm -hmm. whatever I could, money and so on, and for them they wanted fundraising and so on, you know, and those dances they were organizing. So we were going there mm -hmm. and giving money, whatever we could, and uh, the, for the reunion we gave also money, but I was, uh, you know. Not really involved with the management of that, mm -hmm. organizing or something. Okay, and how about your children? Can you tell us a little bit about your... Uh, my children speak Macedonian, and can you tell my grandchildren speak Macedonian. Okay, so you have... If you, I don't know... Your daughters? Two daughters? Yeah. Can you tell my us... My granddaughter speak? speak Macedonian, not only, yeah. Okay, that's My grandchildren. Mm -hmm. How many because grandchildren we speak do Macedonia. you have? We have two and two. Mm -hmm. Actually, half. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us your daughter's names and who their kids are? Oh, Tila and Bojena. Eh? Bojena, that's Bojena. That's now she calls her Christine because when you come here, you have to change your name. Eh? So one of your yeah. daughter's names. She was Bojena originally. Then came back. Bojena bought clothes to Christ, so she's Christine. So that now she's she's Christine. Okay. okay. And she has. Now, and she has. Uh, uh, Daughter and uh, and son. And their names? Yeah, yeah. The name is oh, the name is Gregory. Yeah, mm -hmm. one is and Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Stephanie and the other is uh, uh, how old is she now? Zila. Vicky. Oh, her name they changed to Vicky now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, she was Zila. Mm -hmm. My mother's name was Zila, so she was Zila. Now she's Vicky. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how the name change happened? Was it? At school or something that... Well, yeah, they went to school, they say the well, last name, we cannot change your last name, but first name should be changed. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they have difficulties pronouncing it, eh? Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, Tila, uh, Tila, Tila, unusual name. So they, they gave her uh, Vicky. Yes. And Bojana, this is Polish Bojana, they actually cannot say exactly Bojana. Mm -hmm. So they changed Bojana, this Polish name, eh? Mm -hmm. Because she was born in Poland, my kids were born in Poland. Yes. 
and Zila uh, now Zila is Vicky. And and Vicky's kids are. Vicky is uh, uh, Daniel is uh, Daniel is twenty twenty four now. She's a teacher. He's a very good boy, mm -hmm. and he uh, graduated from the University of Guelph. Guelph, actually, mm -hmm. they call. And theoretical physics. He was very good. Mm -hmm. And now she's in. You know, he's uh, the engineer in the, the University of Toronto. So science uh, knowledge yeah, runs yeah. in the family. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Monica. Now Monica. She's also studying at the University of Toronto. She's good. To social studies, that's what she likes. Wonderful. And the other one, they actually Bojana, my, my 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 older daughter, she moved to the states because her uh, her, her husband is a uh, chiropractor, so they moved to the states. They had a company they are selling uh, uh, what they are selling, honey? Laser. Oh, laser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They moved to, now though they Connecticut. They're doing fine there too. Hey, wonderful. My grandson's name is Gregory Gigo. Oh. And he said, I'm Gigo and my Macedonian. <laughs> Good. And he speaks Macedonian too. Uh, wonderful. And uh, he's living in, in the no, States he, now? Yeah, he, yeah he, lives, mm -hmm. yeah. he lives in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a uh, truly an immigrant who came to, to Toronto with very little. You know what I say? My story is yes. we moved from hell to paradise. This is my story. From hell to paradise. Yes. Now, hell was in, in, in Greece when I was born there, in my village, and, and fighting and bombing and everything, no school, terrible living. And we came here, now we have here, we have everything. It's the best place to stay. That's all I can say. Uh, and as a successful and a great example of someone who uh, who came to Canada with nothing and was able to overcome all that? What would you like to uh, to to tell um, the younger generation? What advice would you give to them? Well, it's, it's hard to say, you know, advice. But as I would I would like to tell them that uh, they should be proud they are Macedonians, and they should try to get uh, some good education and to to find after that really work a better workplace. That's what I can say. They should yeah, the study. Secret, the, the, secret, yeah. the secret to your success it, would is, be? Is work. It's hard. Study. I'm a Macedonian, I'm a little bit of a child. Oh, I'm a Macedonian. 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 I'm so imina, so sliki od celoto, so istorija, da mi interesiraše. I, i tuka ove, i mu dadu se, kad ću ga ima na ovije, nekakim je deo Macedonija na Historical Society, da da je neki na, na YouTube, će biti, mislim, ili nekada je na, na internetu, ne znam deka. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, će biti tamo, Macedonija Historical Society, I think the name it is. And, uh, Sobra me si tehnikata ke bide tamo napisano ko neko interesira za statica, za selo naše i za decata begalci, makedonski te desa bo Polska. Makedonski desa bo Polska, jedna ta knjiga je, a druga ta piše statica i statičeni. Vi je napišete dve te knjige? Dve jaz lijepo napisano, da še mi interesira. Moja hobi beš ovo. Znači, poreka za makedonski te deca, što se kaže da mu kažeš? Makedonski te deca, što ja se rekao misto, da se osjekajte, da se makedonski, da se pravde, da se... Gordi. Gordi, da, točno, naši. V knjigata, zaš ti kažeš, v knjigata, bi neki moti jazike, nemam nikako stručni jazik moje polski, ja završim v Polska. Nito makedonski nisam završeno stručno, nito angliski nemam završeno stručno, nito srbokonojice, nito grski. Grski učil po školu, to po Polska. Znači, stručen mi beš polski jazik. Ko ga napisa knjiga ta, neko mi velja bel. Ne je taka točno na makedonski ovo izbor. Taka si je napisana knjiga ta, knjiga ta je napisana na statičko makedonski dialekt. Znači, ima neko izborovi, što ne se upotrebo do literaturu na makedonski jazik, znaš, ne ga znajete. Ama to je mnogo ubavno, ko začuvate jazikot od statica. Sigurno, doma govorim na makedonski, i decata govorim na makedonski, i se ke vnucite govorim na makedonski. Mnogo ubavo i mnogo ti blagodarime za ova intervju. I sega imame golema čez, 
да продължиме интервюто с вашата жена. О, сигурно. Фана Чичкировска. Милошевска, Чичкировска, така? В основа да беше Милошева. Милошева и Чичкировска. <laughs> Или Опашинова, знаеш ли вие нашите имена, как ви се? <laughs> Фана Чичкировска. Милошевска, така? Милошевска, да. Милошевска, да, да, да от момиско име. Опашинова, Добро... исто. Добро... Опашинова. От... Да, 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 и Опашинова. Добро дойде на нашето интервю. Имахме много в интервю со вашиот маш доктор Гиго Чачкировски. Може вие да ни кажете нещо ваши спомени от селото? От кое село сте и да ни кажете? И аз съм от село Бов и татко ми беше, како сите, шо и собра е партизан и татко ми беше го отиде партизан да се бори во тоа време и беше еден от тия първите, шо поедина во борбата. Во која година погина? 47-ма. 47-ма беше ли погина? 47-ма. Татко ми погина 47-ма, еден од првите, мајка ми како вдовица остана со две деца. И кога беше тој момент што и береа децата, ние од, од нашето село избегавме, заш нашето буф је одно прекулерен. И... Тако беше, јас се сетјавам од, од тие години, што од тие од Лерин, со инки ќе збореа со партизаните, партизаните од вас страна од планината ќе му одговорва и ние во селото се слушавме. И тие ќе му вика е предадете се, и тие вика и предадете се. И ќе бомбардира е од Лерин и сите бомби во селото паѓаја. Во селото, зато ние избегавме од селото, се преселивме во Герман. Во Герман седивме околу 11 месеци и од Герман решија, ако и береа децата, ако не береа, Мајка ми оти беше една од првите вдовици, една друга, пак од селото наше, Фана Миновска. Е, мажот му беше Коста, ние тамо во селото, така му викавме на жените Стрина Костадиница. И има е 30 деца по 15. На мајка ми најмалечкото дете беше 11 месеци. Мајка му му го даде, таа беше болна, имаше тиби во тоа време, и му рече, вели, на вој свет ти одавам, на тој да ми обратиш детето. 11 месеци, мајка ми двака, но знаеш, двака и двака и пикни му како на врапче во уста. Од Герман, ко не собра, отидаме во Албанија. Во Албанија, во... требаше да има во Македо... во тогаш Југославија, ама ти тој ги затвори границите и чекавме некој, еди... некој 10 сати на граница, то беше во новембар. Ладно, и на... после Албанија не прими. Албанија не прими и не кладе во казарми, дървени казарми, порано тамо вели држе кони. И ние сите како рибчина, мали дечина едно до друго, двете мајки од едната страна и од другата да ги чуват тие дечината. И во Албанија седиме па тамо некои 10-11 месеци со брод, Преку Дибралтал, како не водеа, ниту не знам, во Полска. Слеговме во Полска, во Бдинја или Гданск, не знам дека. Но тамо со воз седне во душници с други. Душници беше по прв пат не кладоа во слама, сите не измија, не... од една врата не влегваја, бањање, стрижање, од вошчите, <laughs> чистење на друга страна и две недели во слама. Во слама, не мачкај се кој вечер со ти болки, бе мене разранети. Не мачкај, после та слама га изгорија, не кладоа во соби. Ко не кладоа во соби, па метвам како сеја беше пред Крисмас. Ние, знаеш, дечки од дома, е... не знаевме, госпо, ко видовме слики на стисо, луѓе со бради, Маркс, Енгелс, Ту е Господ. <laughs> Моли се Господ и злата да ми е најш побргу мама и тате да ми донесеш. <laughs> Само то не интересираше мама и тате. И от, от тама во тоа душници с други дито не знам колко време се еме. Майка ми газе до Аурма во болница, зашто детенцето е 11 месечно под фанелата. Тоа мочка и на нејзе, мочка и мочка и е, во новембар, в зимно време. Фати... 
Нюмонија и сетне рекоа ти може да и ти би га отделија од нас на болница и та тамо од болницата ниту башка га за некоја од тамо сетне за, не, за некоја возгожелец возгожелец тамо се најдовме со сите и така после цел живот како што кажваше мажот ми да. го поминавме а сакаш и нешто да кажеш за селото речено за селото ко се мажив Прв пат отидовме во селото, во... јас, знаеш, селска Осу, работа. Осумна си прва година беше. Ја, во Статица. Сед, од, то, од тој пат се не одевме стално, заш имаше една бабичка Стрина на мажот Незин и свекорни браќа. Додека беше жива таа Стрината дома, се осетјавме како, како дома. Ама знаеш, во Грција таков е закон, кузни каков закон, не знам, од 12 сата до 4 цела Грција спие. Да сакаш да купиш една кока-кола, една оранжада, нема дуќе не отворени, цела Грција спие. И ќе шетавме цел ден, секој пат си рентаме кола, ќе шетавме, сем ти си дојдавме, ние ќе си легнеме да починиме. И тоа ми остана во умо, таа баба, во Грција останата, цело време во Грција живеше, со син му, со децата, со внуците. Тоа е во Статица? Во Статица. Значи во Македонија во Гестиот. Е, да, да, во да, во Статица. Некој му дојде на вратата. Му дојде на вратата и бабата му зборва грчки. И, и стрина наша ни беше, ама баба беше. Невесто, невесто, вели, прости мори, невесто, стани малце, вели, види, вели, во ибак, косан човек шо сака. И јас станав и ојдув и на Грко, ако сакаш и по грчки може да те кажам, му вела... На македонски, македонски. Му вела, шо сакате му вела? А, бре, вели, тој човекот ми вели, јас вели, дојду вели од Солун, вели, ги чиста му лиштата, вели, вие машините, вели, не завршив работа, вели, утре пак треба да дојдам, да не влечкам машините, вели, горе, долу, е, прашам бабата, дали можам да ги остам, вели, тука во дворо. И јас му казав на Стрина, мола Стрина, мола сака, мола само вие машините да ги остави во двора, мола, зашто утре патја дојде и чисти улиштата од медо, мола. Вако да го истури, вели, нека ги остави машините, вели, шо треба, вели, да ме опитва, вели, те разбуди в тебе, вели. Сакам да ти кажам, бабата, толку време си зборват дома македонски и и казнати, и тепани, и колени, и бесени. Мула, како така, мур стрино, мула, ти ич, не се научи по-грцки. А мур, че до велики учам еден збор денес, велики оречам десет пати, тоа е, тоа, 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 ќе легнам да спијам утре, ден да го запорај, вели. Е, току знаат грцки старите наши во Грција. Да, да, не знаат. И после кога дојдовте во Канада, знам дека си отворивте со мажот ти, Ординација, може малко да ни кажеш за тоа како стана? Јас бев 10 месеци во Канада и мажот ми ми вели, знаеш што вели, нема вели, ако клай ме вели секретарка, вели крај на неделата, вели, треба секретарката да ја платиме. Со што ќе ја платиме, нема пари ниту за јадење, не за секретарка да платиме. Ке седиш, ке фатваш телефоно. А преди го, како ќе фатвам јас телефон, кога не знам ништо, мола што се збори. Ќе офатваш, вели, сакаш да ме ќе офатваш. Тоа ти знаеш, тоа беше работата. Збор вав грчки, збор вав руски, збор вав полски, збор вав себо круешен. Ама не англиски, што требаше тука. Верувај, жена, ношијата ќе легне да спие и телефони ми дзрнкаја. Ке ми дзрнеше телефон, ќе ми скокнеше мршата. Леле, Боже, како, научив еден збор. О, хало, хай, хао, а ју, файн. Ке не хеф јур хелт нумбер. Ке ми даде хелт нумбер, ќе опрочита в името какво име беше, на таков јазик ќе почнев да му говорам. Ќе овиде в грчко на грчки. Па сенцито на че немаш англичанци. Ќе виде в полско на полски. Не че ни имена да кажам, бат е да наш многу, многу добар македонец, предобар македонец, е мембер на Юнайтед Маседонија. Ко ми ја даде картата, ми ја даде името, И јас го прочитав грцко презиме и му почнав на грчки да му зборам на човека. Ти, вели, знаеш кој сум јас, вели, мене, вели, се најде да ми збориш грчки, вели. Ама, кој ќе дој крај на дено и моите нерви греде, а од тука излегва е надвар од главата. Му, вели, знаеш шо, мола, 
Ако си толку смел мене да ми кажуваш кој си ти, на боа презиме само тој јазик му се следува. Сакаш на твојо мајчин јазик му вла, во ваа земја е слободно, оди мени си презимето му вла, да знам како да ти говорам и на тебе му вла. Фала многу фала. На неговото македонско презиме. Сполај ти многу и само ако може малку да кажеш шо сакаш да му порачаш на на нашата млада генерација, младите деца што гледат ова? Да се секој пат работливи. Да работат, заш ние дојдоме тука во Кана да со едно куферче 20 кила. Во тие 20 кила, јас со две девојчиња доваѓав, ми дадоа пола карта, нема е право 20 кила да носат. Почнавме од ништо, од ништо, од ништо. Стигнавме до еден степен, што денес сме подобро, подобро стоеме од тие што се родени во оваа земја со баба, дедо и прадедо. Да, 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 да знаат, да работат и да ценат тоа што вадат, да речат тоа ти со мака го извадив, а не денја работи, нош ја пи. Прво работата да му е важна и учењето, тоа ми е за нашата генерација. Сполај ти фана, Сполај ти доктор Чешкировски, многу ви благодариме што дојдовте тука да ни кажите за вашите искуства во Канада, за нашите архиви во Кенедиен Македонијан Хисторикал Сосајти. Многу благодариме и ние што не потраживте, што знаете дека сме, секој пат сме биле и сме и ќе останиме